You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. I'm about to share with you some Ayurvedic-based wisdom so that you can better customize your workouts in order to improve overall muscle tone and burn body fat. Now, one of the reasons why this is so important is because in this one-size-fits-all society that we live in, that the media tries to push us in this one direction for everyone, we can begin to understand why some workouts, some diet plans, some wellness plans work better for some people, but not so much for others. And there is always a reason for this. Remember, there's always an answer to what ails you. It might just not be readily apparent to you. And that's just where more of that search, more of that health journey comes. It took me many years to find my answer. I hope to be able to provide you on hopefully a daily basis, more and more information so that you can arrive at your answer at a much faster rate. And I really believe that. It just in today's day and age that the amount of information available to us is unbelievable. I mean, back when I got started, yeah, the internet was around, but I didn't necessarily have it. I didn't have my own personal computer around the year 2000 or so. And so what I had to do was I relied more on books. We had dial-up internet, not as exciting. Things took a whole lot longer to research, but also the depth and the breadth of knowledge just wasn't there. But it was available in books. And that's why you know I kind of feel bad for a lot of people moving into the health-based industry today. And the reason why I say that is that you can look up anything and you will find an answer for it within seconds. But the problem is, it might not be the right answer right now. And you might only be looking at it from a surface-based perspective. Now, keep in mind, most of the search results on the first page of Google are done by really clever marketers and people really good at what's called search engine optimization. That means they're really good at writing articles that Google can index. They can say, okay, this fits all of our requirements. People seem to think it's popular. We're going to rank it high. Well, I don't know if you know this, but it's like 70 to 80% of the people click on the first link basically available on Google, not counting the ads. And then it's somewhere around 10 to 15% on the second one, maybe 5 to 10% on the next, and then very few, and almost never, no one ever goes to the second page. So the thing is, I mean, you're doing really well if you're ranked at the top of Google for sure, but here's the issue. It's probably only a really nice overview of an article. And I just urge people to go deeper. That's it. I just want you to go deeper. I want you to look deeper into an anti-inflammatory nutrition, eat deeper into an exercise program, look deeper into you know gut-based issues. That's all. So I'm, I'm not saying that one person is right, one person is wrong. I just want to look at this from multiple perspectives and multiple angles. When you do that, you leave yourself open to all possibility. Right now, I feel like there's people so closed off. It has to be keto. It has to be carnivore. It has to be plant-based. It has to be high carb. It has to be low carb. So the problem is we get stuck in these dogmas. And when you're stuck in a dogma, you can't even see the all of the research around you as well that says, oh, this may be true as well. Well, you say, oh, that can't be true because look at how well this diet's working for a lot of my friends or clients or loved ones, whoever it might be. Okay, great. But what does that mean for the long term? Great in the short term? Great in the long term? I don't know. The two don't always work well together. I learned that long time ago in my natural bodybuilding days. I was doing things that was absolutely transforming my body. I was able to get down to below 5% body fats, but while doing that, not necessarily healthy for my body. The things that I did in order to get there, they certainly weren't sustainable. But I was ready for if I did a fitness shoot or something like that in the past. It got me there. 
Now, would I go back to that again? No, it's not an interest of mine. Now my interest is long-term health. Do I want to keep myself in shape? Absolutely. Do I now do that more for my body type and long-term sustainable energy and I believe overall anti-aging? Yes. And that's a lot of what I want to share with you today. So absolutely, yes. I want to help you transform your body. If you want to get a lean physique, if you want to build more muscle, if you want to tone up that body, which essentially means shedding the fat over it, uh, we can help you do that. And so that's what I want to share with you right now today. And I want to do it from an Ayurvedic perspective, but always keep Keep in mind, Ayurveda is backed up by modern medicine. Now, here's the thing, though. I even feel weird saying that. Modern medicine does not have to give credence and value and respect to Ayurveda at all. I mean, like, at all. Ayurveda doesn't need that from modern-based medicine. Ayurveda is doing just fine on its own, and it has been for more than 5,000 years. And much of what we know today we take from the original form of medicine, which is Ayurveda, and we simply rediscover it. So for example, Dr. Emmanuel Vader, brilliant man, don't get me wrong. He said, oh, well, I've developed this technique for manual lymph drainage, and I learned it during my doctoral degree in, in naturopathy. So like that was important. So I learned about that. But the interesting thing was I said, I've already heard of this through Ayurvedic-based massage techniques. So did Emmanuel Vader stumble across Ayurvedic massage techniques, or did he basically rediscover them again on his own? Well, I don't know. I did, was never able to speak with him, but I can tell you this, it's already been around. Practiced it, did it on a small island off of the southeastern coast of India called Sri Lanka. And I was learning these techniques and this is, I mean, so I learned Abhyanga before in textbooks, but then I got to practice it. I said, this is basically the same thing as Emmanuel Vater's techniques. The, the, instead of circles, it's more like lymphatic-based strokes, which I actually think is, is much, much nicer. It's calming for the nervous system. But anyway, it's a rediscovery. So what do we have, though, for a rediscovery of body type workouts and body types in modern medicine? Well, they're called somatotypes, S O M A. T-O, somato, and then types, somatotypes. It's just different body types. It was studied in terms of psychology because believe it or not, the body we're given typically does affect the mindset as well. Not always, not always for sure. I'm a walking contradiction with that myself for sure. But also there's a lot more that goes into that. A lot of people believe in birth order. A lot of people believe in astrological based signs. Uh, there's nurture versus nature. There's all sorts of things that go into that. But one thing that doesn't change is your body type. So that's what we want to talk about today. Now, I'm not going to go deep on body types today because I hope that you've tuned in previously for my podcast on body types. So I'm going to do a general overview. And the nice thing is what we did over at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts is we've broken down a lot of the podcast topics now to their own channel. So you can actually scroll along the new banner on mobile or on desktop and you'll see a subcategory now called Ayurvedic Medicine Answers. And what I want you to do is just simply click on that for all of my previous shows on Ayurveda. And if you scroll back, there's three pages worth of shows. You'll be able to learn all about Ayurvedic medicine, and you can even discover your own body type as well with not just a body type quiz, but actual images to see where you may match up at your best body type. Okay, so what I want to get into is this. Quick overview on body types give you the actual workout you should be doing, and then leave you with a little bit of nutritional-based advice as well in the end, because we know we need not just exercise, but nutrition as well for burning body fat. So the first thing we want to look at is when we're looking to transform our body, there's a few things we have to look at. One is our age. The second, male or female. The third, our level of activity during the day. The fourth, our overall body type. Okay. And I would even say a fifth, if there's a fifth one in there, and that's more like muscle maturity. How long have you actually been exercising? Because in the beginning you can make massive strides. So there's a lot of people out there who don't believe that you can add muscle and burn body fat at the same time. And I can tell you for sure, they've never visited some of the best body transformation centers and clinics and, and personal training facilities out there. Because if you give me a novice to exercise and to someone doing a really good body transformation-based program, just working out three days a week with high-intensity resistance-based training, for sure, 
we can help them add muscle and burn body fat in those first four months. Now, the longer you've been working out though, the less your exercise is going to make... Now, you can't stop doing exercise, but the less it's going to make a huge game changer in short-term results. It helps get little by little more results over time, strengthens the bones, certainly boosts the metabolism uh, on a, on a every three-day basis. And then, of course, like I just said, maintains your results. So it matters, right? But for your first four months to six months, maybe even up to a year, you can make tremendous strides, like tremendous strides. You can add muscle. You can add... I've seen people add a 12 pounds of muscle. Like I really have within that first six months or so. I mean, it's a lot, but you can do it, right? Some people are able to do that based on body type. We'll be talking about that in a moment. And I've seen people lose 100 pounds in a year. So you can do these things for sure. Now, you're going to hit your majority of results in the first year, and that's great. Because I'm telling you right now, no matter who you are, 99% of people can reach their body transformation results within 6 to 12 months. So if you need to lose 50 to 100 pounds, you can do that within a year. No doubt about it. If you need to lose 30 pounds, I'm willing to bet you work with a good person, you follow a good system, you're going to be able to lose that within 6 months, that 30 pounds. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I really believe that. It's just, is it a priority in your life? And I don't mean to to say that in a, a condescending way at all. It's just, sometimes it's not. Like, that's the truth. Let's be honest with ourselves. Sometimes it's not. We don't necessarily prioritize the time because our main priority might be family or work or something else at the time. And, and listen, I get it. I understand that. I live in the real world. I am a super busy person myself. I've got a lot of different responsibilities and I'm, I'm managing my own stress and energy and, and all my responsibilities as well. So I get it. There's ebbs and flows, but when the time is right, let's take advantage of it. All right. So here's what we want to do. We want to look at what body type are you? Really simple assessment. An endomorph is a person that typically has wider hips, man or woman, okay? And typically, the, the shoulders width is of average size, but they lean more towards carrying more muscle mass and body fat, which means that these are the type of people, great people, some of the most fun to be around, easygoing, relaxing, great friends, like really great friends. And again, it doesn't mean any of the other body types can't be, but more easygoing, more relaxed, more fun loving. I'm not going to get too much into the psychology of it today. I've done a show on that, but they gain weight more easily. So they're more accumulators. So just think of this. Do you gain weight? If you're not really following a nutrition plan, do you gain weight or do you lose weight? Okay. If you gain weight, you're more of an endomorph. Okay? If you have an easier time putting on muscle and mass and body fat, you're more of an endomorph. Now, if you have a harder time, if you're a hard gainer, and if you're not following a nutrition plan, you lose weight more easily, you can't put on muscle as easily, you can't even put on as much body fat, you're more of an ectomorph. Now, typically as people age, it's easier for them to put on body fat. Their metabolism begins to slow a bit. But keep in mind, that doesn't mean that you're an endomorph. It just means that a little bit of that aging process, you may have become less active, you might have actually lost muscle mass. Your metabolism isn't as strong. But an ectomorph is someone that typically has thinner hips, and they have thinner shoulders. They also have thinner bones, thinner joints. Compare your wrist, like if you're an ectomorph, compare your wrist to that of an endomorph. An endomorph has a larger bone size. Now, again, this is where I'm always keeping my mind open. When I was a young 18-year-old personal trainer, I was like, there's no such thing as big bones. That's an excuse some people use. I mean, I was young and not too bright, okay? So that's the thing. I only knew what I knew, right? And I was, I was stuck in that. I don't know if it was that, that 18-year-old meathead mentality. It probably was, right? It probably was. I had to mature. I had to grow a bit. And now I understand is if you were to take an x-ray of two people at five foot eight, and one was an ectomorph and one was an endomorph, the shocking difference between their bone size and what's called the breadth of the joint, which is like the, the full circumference of it, is there's a stark difference. I mean, it can be one and a half to two X easily the size. Their bones are really bigger, right? So an endomorph actually is someone that has bigger bones. Now, that doesn't mean they have to add a lot more body fat, but it does mean that this person is typically more prone to gaining, to adding muscle and body fat. So we're going to remember that when it comes time to our workouts. Ectomorph, thin shoulders, they have uh, meaning not as wide, uh, thinner hips, 
and don't add muscle as easily. And typically, again, smaller calves, smaller forearms, where the endomorph has typically larger calves and larger forearms. Okay, now there are subtypes. We'll talk about that in a moment. The last type is the mesomorph. The mesomorph is in between. They typically are able to put on muscle. They have what's called more of an athletic-based build. So you look at them and you say, oh, that person looks like maybe they exercise. And, and now as an ectomorph, you can actually put on muscle. So I'm not saying you can't do that. Even if you're a hard gainer, you can actually look like a mesomorph. It's not your natural genetics, but it's the phenotype. It's what you've created with your body. That's really important to know, right? So for me, not naturally a bigger person, but I was able to go from my natural body weight might be somewhere around 160 pounds or so. Like if I didn't do too much, it'd be somewhere right around there. Maybe, yeah, right around 160. But I was able to get to 200 pounds by diet and exercise. Now, was that natural for my body? No. Was I able to put on a lot of muscle doing that? Yes. Did it make me more unhealthy? The answer is yes. It moved me further away from my natural genetics. Not good in terms of energy, not good in terms of immunity, sluggishness, mucus production, etc. Anyway, let me go on. Okay, so with the mesomorph, they typically have broader shoulders. This is where a lot of people misdiagnose the different doshas in Ayurveda. Because in Ayurveda, what we're looking at is the endomorph is called the kapha. The ectomorph, the hard gainer, the thinner type, is called the vata, and the mesomorph is called the pitta. Well, the pitta typically has broader shoulders. They have medium-sized hips, but they actually have typically more powerful leg muscles, quads, hamstrings, glutes. Why this matters is they are able to put on muscle, and if doing things right with nutrition, they're able to stay fairly lean. Now, let's talk just a moment about usually people are not so dominant in just one body type. And that's because many people are a blend, as I like to say, of many different cultures and heritage and all of these great things. Like myself, I'm, I'm like 10 different nationalities, literally. And so, you know, when you look at different nationalities and you look at cultures, some people, cultural-wise, can be more of one body type, one of more dosha. And so what happens, though, is over time, we can kind of be, let's say, Kapha dominant or endomorph dominant, but we can actually have a subtype, believe it or not, of Vata. What does that mean? Well, we have more of a Kapha based shape, but we might have actually thinner ankles and thinner calves, and we might have thinner wrists. But for the most part, we're able to put on muscle more easily, put on body fat more easily. So if you want to know more about your body type, I'd simply recommend going back to my Ayurvedic podcast. Just go to stephencabal.com forward slash podcasts. And starting around episode 900, each week I did a show about the body types and I am teaching you how to figure out your own body type. Okay, so now let's go into the actual workouts for each body type. So you want to look at five main things, okay? You want to look at what types of exercise are best for each body type. The second is how much actually you're going to do volume wise. So like how many sets are you going to do based on your body type? Then how many reps are you going to do? So that means how many times of each exercise are you going to lift that weight or move your body if it's a body weight exercise? Then you want to figure out how many days a week am I going to go to the gym? How many days a week are rest days? And then you need to look at the overall training-based recommendations. So what does our overall workouts look like? Okay, so I want to give you that right now. If you are more of a body type that puts on weight more easily, Okay, so you kind of look at carbohydrates and you gain weight, or you don't exercise and it's hard for you to keep your metabolism boosted. We see that all the time, right? You might even see that with your friends. So, okay, it's why we developed the fat loss city system because we know there are people out there, again, let's just say both of you are five foot eight, and one five foot eight person weighs 180 pounds, and the other five foot eight person weighs 130 pounds. How is this possible? There's a 50 pound difference, yet both of them are, let's say, five foot eight, and they, one person who's even 130 pounds, they eat three times as many carbohydrates per day and isn't even really watching their diet and yet they maintain 130 pounds. The other person, five foot eight, 180 pounds, they're watching what they eat. They're trying to do their best and they are 180 pounds, maybe for them 20 pounds away from their goal. So at their ideal, they're about 160 pounds. That's what's best for their body type, right? Because we're not all meant to be 130 pounds. Some people are actually at their best at 160 pounds and that's exactly where they should be. That's why you need to respect your body type, respect your dosha right? You're not supposed to look like your friend. You're supposed to look like you. 
And that's beautiful in and of itself. You're supposed to be you. You're not supposed to be anybody else. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to be in good shape because that's what leads to overall wellness and longevity. And more of the endomorph type are more prone to cardiovascular, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure. Why? They're accumulators. They're more of an anabolic type. They build up more. Whereas the ectomorph is more catabolic, more osteoporosis, more fatigue, more anxiety, more breaking down based issues. And the mesomorphs are more prone to inflammation, right? So, okay, let's go into this. The endomorph actually wants to focus on workouts that primarily look at higher intensity and towards a metabolic fat burning based workout, right? So I know a lot of people don't believe in fat burning workouts, but scientifically, there are ways to boost your metabolism better than others. So for example, heavier strength based training does not boost your metabolism as well as high intensity interval training or high intensity exercise, which I just spoke about on last Thursday's podcast, 1469. So here's what we need to do. The endomorph needs to work out more days than not. And in my opinion, five days a week maybe even six, depending on how sluggish that metabolism is. They don't need to overdo it, especially if they have lower thyroid, but they need to get the body moving. And believe it or not, they can get away with just two strength training days per week, just two weight-based days per week. Why is that? The body naturally accumulates muscle mass. The body naturally accumulates weight. So we can actually do three days a week of cardio for them and two days a week of high intensity resistance training. And again, I have previous podcast on what all of those things are. I can't do it all in one show, but you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and simply click on the little tab that says training Thursday shows and you'll see all of the free workouts that I've given you before for these types of things. So endomorph five plus days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off, Friday, Saturday on, Sunday off. So you can get a really nice workout right there. You can do other things, Monday, Tuesday on, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Always exercise the day of that flex meal that will help metabolize that glucose as well. So more interval training, more cardio actually helps the endomorph out as well. Now, the mesomorph, what do we do for the mesomorph? The mesomorph is a great balance. Now just figure this, as a mesomorph, do you tend to lose weight more easily? Or do you tend to gain weight more easily? Because for you, you want to be doing three strength training or resistance workouts per week. And then you could do a little bit more interval training or a little bit more cardio. The cardio is going to help more for the slower burn with the blood sugar. High intensity interval training does that as well. But I've just seen so many great things in my practice too from doing more of that cardio as well. So typically for the mesomorph, I recommend more of a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday program. And then they could do like a fun workout on the weekend. It could be yoga. It could be going out and doing some, you know, indoor rock climbing. It could be anything they want to keep that body moving. But even a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, fun weekend day can be great for a mesomorph based workout. And again, for mesomorph, sky's the limit. If you want to put on a good amount of muscle, you could even do four high intensity resistance training workouts per week. And that could be all you do. And you could maintain absolutely great shape doing that as well. And then the last one is the ectomorph. What do we do for the ectomorph? Well, with the ectomorph, we want to actually be careful how much heavy training we're doing because they are more CNS dominant. That means their central nervous system is more prone to burning out. They're more prone to stress and they're actually more prone to injury. So we have to be a little bit more careful. With this group, if we were doing three sets to four sets for the mesomorph, three sets or so for the endomorph because they just don't need as much volume, and we were actually going to do then the same type of resistance training workout for an ectomorph, what we would do is actually two sets. We might do a warm-up and then one heavier base set. Now, they could definitely work up to three, but we want to make sure they're not too sore and they're not too fatigued the next day. This particular group are more prone to DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, and really burning out of that central nervous system and are lowering of the heart rate variability. So typically for an ectomorph, I actually recommend not training two days in a row. I recommend a Monday, Wednesday, Friday training routine 
It can be a combination of resistance training. It does not have to be high intensity interval training because remember, they're more actually prone to higher metabolism in the first place. So oftentimes I'm recommending a good quality strength training routine, a little bit more rest between sets and uh, a day definitely in between weight workouts. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday works great. And then I also love Hatha Yoga, Tai Chi, or Qigong as balancing workouts for the ectomorph. So really big fan of that. And they could even add one of those during the week if they wanted as well. More on massage, foam rolling, Again, more of the Hatha yoga working on breathing and relaxation because recovery is one of the main things we need for the ectomorph because that's actually when they're gaining, right? So if you're a hard gainer and you're trying to put on muscle as an ectomorph, you're not actually putting on that muscle when you're in the gym. You're breaking down the muscle tissue when you're in the gym and then it's your rest days and your nutrition where you're actually beginning to build up your body. So What I want to do right now, since I'm already over my time and I love talking about Ayurveda, I can talk about this all day, is I have in-depth podcasts on all of these things. Go back to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. Simply click on the Ayurvedic topic, so the Ayurvedic logo. And what you'll find is starting at episode 900, I'll talk about Ayurveda in general. Then on episode 907, I start talking about the doshas and body type. On 914... I give you your own assessment. On 922, I give you images to match up your body type with that specific dosha. And then from there, I go on diet plan. So I give you a diet plan based on your dosha on episode 929. Then I go on meal planning on 936. So remember, all the information is there. I just can't squeeze it all into one podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Again, everything is over at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Today was episode 144. Four seven six, And as always, if this information was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.